Um, thank you, everyone. I just need a second to set up. Um, but this this moment, I would also like to use to state that uh, I've been present uh, throughout the conference uh, yesterday, uh, virtually online. Um, and also today in a hybrid form. Um, I have to um, state the obvious, which is um, I find apologizing for uh, technical difficulties, issues to be superfluous and uh, almost oxymoronic because this, this um, idea of technical issues is actually within the core of Techno uh, uh, technolo technological usage itself. So um, never apologize for the internet or for Zoom. Um, it's it's actually a, a beautiful thing and it reminds us of um, the importance of being human and of failing. Uh, on that note, on the note of failing and um, technology, um, what I want to present to you today is not what I wanted to uh, present to you originally. Um, can you guess why? Yes, exactly. It's because of technological failures. Um, I lost both my presentation and my script, um, which is also, I think, quite interesting because it goes well very deep into what I was planning on saying today. Uh, the the organizers asked me to uh, keep it short, so that's why I brought my digital watch, which I never ever wear, but it has, uh, it, it lights up when I go over 15 minutes, so you will permit me in using this, which I do not know how to use. Um, uh -huh, there we go, so 15 minutes. What a beautiful watch. Okay. Can you tell me when 15 minutes is, are done? Reverting <laughs> back to. Okay, okay. Just tell me because I, I can. So. Um, this, in large part, is going to be a um, a pastiche of what I planned on saying, what I planned on showing you, and some of the things that I didn't plan on showing you or telling you, but I have the feeling it's worth saying. Um, as my very crude introduction that I wrote uh, said, uh, my, my background is in uh, social sciences. I had a very uh, rel relatively bright future ahead of me um, during my studies in comparative literature, um, where I found solace in theatrology and dramaturgy. Um, I felt um, almost exuberant from uh, other professors telling me that um, I have a future in uh, in this uh, in this field that I should um, I should consider myself lucky that I have uh, some cognitive abilities to understand uh, uh, complex um, iterations and ideas, but they didn't uh, have that, um, let's call it a pedagogical zeal to recognize that uh, actually what I am was a large part, a college dropout. Um, but I'm glad, I'm glad I dropped out. In the end, uh, it led me to my first and natural born love, which is the arts. Uh, I started with uh, writing. I never stopped. Um, poetry is one of my uh, earliest fixations. Um, having no discipline, um, least of all courage, um, I tried myself into the performing arts. Now, as soon as I start, I, I you will see the 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 velocity and the tra trajectory of the talk that I'm about to give. But keep in mind, as I said, the fragmentary nature of it, uh, that is due to um, exactly the technological issues that we uh, are experiencing, everybody. Um, but as I said, I welcome these uh, interruptions, um, these failures, because it is exactly the topic of 
my talk. I have the similar experience of technophobia. Um, but my technophobia was very much in, uh, informed from the beginning of my uh, college studies as somebody who studied comparative literature or at the uh, Filosofsky Fakultet knows uh, from year one, we are bombarded by critique from structural, post-structural, especially post-structural um, to the nth degree where you at a certain point um, forget what was being criticized and internalize the criticism itself. To be a Jungian is to be a new age uh, hippie selling, um, uh, what are they, called? essential oil drinking or sniffing uh, lunatic. Um, to, 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 to read anarchists is to be a pedophile. To, to enjoy something as simple as a pop song, it requires a deep intellectual understanding of the genre. You cannot just simply enjoy it. Um, this is the disease that I termed the disease as a disease. Uh, this is the disease that I um, had to overcome, but I'm grateful to the disease. Um, these, these, these inflammatory moments that I had are um, gave me an opportunity to think about performance um, in um, I would say deeper, but again, my critical self is telling me that this depth is an illusion by itself, uh, coming from uh, from embodied me metaphors and what and so on and so on. But I do find deeper experience, subjective experiences with performances um, that I uh, theoretically um, enrich. So, as I said before, uh, my talk will be on um, actually on speed, on velocity, on the archive, and on the fuzzy materialities that um, that are uh, always, uh, please allow me, always already uh, present. So I have multiple uh, screens that I'm going to be reading from. I think you will enjoy the paradox of, of sorry, it all. Sorry, we lost the... Ah, yeah, you did, you did, exactly, okay. See, technical issues. Um, the link you sent is, I always have to go back to the original link to... No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. There is this, this uh, I think, uh, a political issue about Zoom. Uh, when they uh, entered in this uh, highly capitalistic mode of functioning with the plans, basic plan, pro professional plan, and I, I forget what the third one is. As you all remember, during the first lockdown, it was completely free. And it, I, I think they took about five months to start charging. Uh, this this is, within itself, I think, is quite, quite uh, problematic. So, um, um, yes, ah, well, again, something's not wrong. Okay, great, great, great. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be better. Also have a presentation with a couple of videos. I hope everything is going to work. Okay. I'll share the screen when it's necessary. So as I said before, I am here to expose my wounds, my private slimy failure and to warn of lessons learned. My mother never called them happy mistakes. I saw them only as resentments. So in 2019, I deepen this wish, this, this fanaticism to create a performance piece that was so distanced from the corporal event or action, um, a new way of working uh, that I could maybe synthesize a, a term for, maybe make it something catchy like conceptual performance. Uh, it could catch on. 
Um, he does uh, Shtero could uh, uh, dismantle it little by little like a ninja that she is. Uh, I could find a good barber and people could finally stop adding performance artists at the end of a dance and theater call for uh, artists and papers. In 2021, through three online meetings, I managed to resuscitate a performance that I was thinking of uh, within the, uh, those parameters. And the resulting piece um, was organized and performed six times, and still it, it's going to be performed um, uh, twice more this year. Um, the piece itself is called Study of an Embrace. Studia Jedno Zagda. Uh, the piece, as I said, titled A Study of an Embrace, consisted of an embrace that is to last exactly 23 minutes and 59, uh, sorry, 23 hours and 59 minutes. It is to be placed in the busiest street possible, preferably one with the most street cameras and advertisement where speedy mobs run up and down and time feels faster. I wanted to close a distance a gesture that was uh, contaminated and inflamed only by the last pandemic. So I wanted to conjure, uh, this is a quote, passerby aff affectscapes composed of aff aff epiphenomenal manifestations, reactions, recreations, reflections, and reminiscence. Having read poems by Emily Dickinson, watched strangers holding onto each other just a little longer through windows of trams, and having contemplated distance as a tactic more than a strategy, bringing distance closer and hijacking the weapon of neo-imperial teleology and strategy. I reflected it in a 14th century version of the form distance, distance, which means to revolt. But truly astonishing things happened outside of the mystical space of the performance. Stretching the original intent to infinity, comments by passerby faint to the ear, a distant cry from a young woman who felt something, children mimicking and asking for an embrace, a Roma child not older than eight years, slapping one of my co-performer on the behind, asking if she wants to marry him. In an hour long conversation with audience members who felt free to express themselves in our presence. And then there are also the numerous interviews alongside different co-performers answering metabolically burning questions like whether or not we urinated, ate, or slept. Everybody came and cheered for love as two performers martyred longevity. The onslaught, of course, was a direct reaction to the biopolitical conditions of the first lockdowns. But also, as I felt, it was an engram of long-standing ideas of alienation and estrangement. But something remarkable happened. In a way, through those epiphenomenal evocations of the embrace, people accepted the idea. This and much more created a double <clears throat> a slit where my interpretations of the work seemed to be irrelevant. Even more so, in a state of frenzy, I accepted to be a guest on a Serbian talk show alongside a beautiful psychologist called Yugos uh, Yugoslava, star uh, and star together on an evening um, late late um, talk show to talk about the importance of hugs. Um, in those interviews, everybody wanted to know if I peed, shat, or ate. It was not the the, the 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 superfluous the, the the shallowness of the questions it was rather the spectacularization of the body of the uh, counterpart of dance performance um uh, it was mainly art per, art performance or performance art that was being spect spectacularized here um this i am mentioning because of all those little tiny things that i need an answer for before an archivist or a institution can um, 
disseminate the work further is how to mark all these ephemeral events. They are not part of the performance, yet they are of it. It is a question of data. Uh, in this regard, I found a concept I've, I find very useful. It is um, the concept of dirty data that I want to discuss. Um, with dirty data, we come closer to the question of velocity and speed. Contemporary perception is me uh, mechanic to large degrees. The spectrum of human vision only covers a tiny part of it. Electric charges, radio waves, light pulses encoded by machines for machines are flying by at slightly subliminal speed. Seeing is superseded by, by calculating probabilities. Vision loses importance and it is replaced by filtering, decrypting, and pattern recognition. Not seeing anything intelligible is the new normal. Information is passed on as a set of signals that cannot be picked up by human senses. Seeing is superseded by calculating probabilities. Vision loses importance and is replaced by filtering, decrypting, and pattern recognition. But what of noise? Edward Snowden in 2011 showed, uh, uh, uploaded a picture. Um, it is a, the title is a single frame of scrambled video imagery. Um, nothing there is intelligible. Nothing there is um, recreated or represented. Uh, the image, as somebody who already kn knows the term noise, would be considered pure noise. But noise is not nothing. On the contrary, noise here is a huge issue. Um, a perfect example for noise being a problematic, politically problematic um, category is the um, event of NSA spying of... Um, uh, of large uh, corporational um, uh, scandals, but I found this uh, this example quite interesting. Um, I don't know if you already heard about. <clears throat> I hope you did. In 2012, a um, a little mistake made by the British government, um, who um, blinded a a woman. I'm trying to find her name, which I think is very important. Um, um, they blinded her by uh, scrambling, interpreting, interpreting uh, Israeli drone images uh, that she and her family was one of the uh, uh, one of the greatest enemies at that time. Uh, the British analysts have um, uh, hacked those video feeds from uh, 2008, and they uh, concluded that um, they uh, had through intercepted broadcasts. Um, leaked training manuals and uh, other leaked uh, information from massively secret operations produced a um, conclusion that is going to blind a woman in 2012. Um, uh, the 43 year old uh, woman was blinded by an aerial strike. Two minutes, sorry. Uh, two minutes already, nice. Okay, so. Um, the idea of scrambling images, the idea of signaling and noise, where signal is a um, is the true information, while noise is just something uh, that uh, is a a um, sort of failure, uh, cannot be seen, but rather through the uh, simple analysis of uh, modernity and postmodern uh, thinking. Uh, for instance, in Jacques Rancière, um, who tells a uh, mythical story about how um, a, the separation of uh, signal and, and noise might have uh, accomplished in ancient, uh, happened in ancient Greece, where sound was produced by affluent male locals uh, who were defined, who were being defined by speech. Uh, on the other hand, we have women, children, slaves, and foreigners who assumed to produce garbage noise. Those identified as speaking were labeled citizens and the rest as irrelevant, irrational, and potentially dangerous. Similarly today to the question of separating signal and noise, 
there has uh, uh, there arose a fundamental political dimension. Pattern recognition resonates with uh, wider questions of, uh, of political recognition and validity. Uh, who is to be recognized on a political level and as what? As a subject, a person, a leg legitimate category uh, of the population, or perhaps as dirty data. Um, that's why uh, I, I find it quite interesting to talk about something that is almost uh, even further away from uh, data, which is the future itself. Uh, two years ago, we found out that natural increasing uh, uh, solar luminosity is a very slow process um, unrelated to current climate warmings, and it will cause Earth's temperature to rise over the next few hundred millions and uh, millions of years. And in the end, it will result in the complete evaporation of the oceans. One more minute. <laughs> uh, uh, 20 minutes is also okay? Or did you? Okay, just quick, I'll quickly run by okay. everything. So the does this far-reaching uh, futuristic um, scenario uh, change our current, uh, current actions and way of thinking? I think not. Uh, the best example is climate change itself. We are aware of it. We are relativizing the information, but still nothing is to be done. Um, the data we collect are almost uh, uh, categorically humoristic, uh, I find, because they just simulate and spectate without giving any reasonable or accomplished um, information. This is a fact of apoponea. Uh, as you might recall, apoponea is defined as the perception of patterns within random data. Uh, the most common exa example are people seeing faces uh, in clouds or on the moon. Apoponea is about, as Benjamin Bratton wrote, drawing connections and conclusions from sources with no direct connection other uh, than their indis uh, indissolutionable perceptual, uh, perceptual sim simultaneity. And it is within simultaneity that I find the greatest question that needs to be an answered exactly today and exactly at this conference. I, as a performance artist, can uh, uh, witness and uh, really uh, show you that there is, among performance artists, a fear of velocity, of speed, and of um, of, uh, of uh, accumulation of certain temporalities that are not inherent uh, from within. Um, I created uh, a performance piece uh, two years ago. It's, it's called uh, Alive, where A is in parentheses. It's a um, bio performance, new media installation, whatever the, 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 the organizers want to call it. Um, it's a it's a piece that uh, combines grains of kefir and the scanner. Uh -huh. the, the, yeah, and in conclusion, uh, what, whatever the conclusion itself might be, is, um, yeah, well, it, it, it comes down to ephemerality. Performance art, it's very quick, but it's, um, it's about ephemerality, how performance art, which I uh, think of as in being lined with the 60s and 70s, nothing to do with theater or dance. Um, uh, it's an art form that radicalizes ephemerality and presence. And we must be very careful within this digital age or revolution to um, exactly define the politics of archiving the present the present being the present of the performance art or piece itself. And what I wanted to show actually, what I didn't know that I couldn't actually, um, is that uh, I'm glad to see archivists throughout this conference talking about art and artists themselves, not unlike curators who often talk about concepts, organizations and logistics with artists themselves. Uh, themselves. So I encourage you to talk to your local artists more, support them, uh, tr try to show them that uh, this is currently one of their livelihoods. I, I, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, we didn't have time for me to explain uh, how, how and why everything happened, but I wanted to explain also how 
I have a beautiful piece here. It's a performance piece by a, uh, by a, a friend of mine. He wanted me to show you this, to, to show you how archival technology doesn't only need to go ahead. It can also be quite interesting to see it walk behind. Thank you very much.